She is a strict disciplinarian, a leader, and a guide for young teachers. Her exceptionally commendable understanding of e-learning is her forte. With her emotional intelligence and a right blend of approach, compassion, discipline, and constructive freedom to children, she is well appreciated by the students, parents, and the faculty. We welcome you, ma'am. It is our pleasure to have you with us today. See, let me start with uh, being an educator. So uh, somewhere uh, down the line, I would not take too much of time, but uh, I think it started uh, in my own father who was in army where uh, we used to have this conversation, why war? I've been talking about this many a times. And there he would always say that, you know, wars are, uh, it's always in the mind. So in case we can train the mind, so it would work. So from there it started, you know, how to train the mind. So. I uh, somehow realized that, you know, we don't remember anyone else in our life so much as the school teachers and the professors who technically uh, mold our life. So from there, you know, that passion saying that, okay, I would like to be an educator, you know, somewhere if I can contribute to this society. And for me, it is not like a profession, it's like a mission, you know, uh, of transforming students. Uh, bringing positivity in the society and, you know, the creativity, innovation and preparing our students for, you know, what is going to be there. Like now we keep talking about Industrial Revolution 5.0. So how do we prepare our students? You're talking about uh, the, even if we talk about my forte. So my forte came about by, I always feel where we are today, you know, I cannot be operating from what I have studied, how my education was, I need to operate from the future of my students, you know, uh, from 20 years ahead where the society would be. So I keep deliberating what is there. My own brother is in US and he's in the, basically handling is the software architect for uh, the education department of New York. So I keep asking him what next, the, the students all over the world. So what's happening? Even if a student who goes to a particular college, so I keep in touch and I keep asking, what is that extra what you saw out there? And, and I cannot tell my teachers or my students, you know, to take on something unless I myself am well equipped. So that is how uh, the technical part came into being. And uh, apart from that, uh, you know, uh, I feel uh, this is one, uh, another aspect where it's not a job for me. It's divine. You know, it's like a prayer. The moment I enter uh, the school, so for me, it is a meditative space. So that is how uh, my journey has been. And it's almost 32 years now and 14 years as a school leader. Uh, next, we have with us Hindu ma'am. So I have met her prior as well through virtual sessions and it is always my pleasure to invite us on board with us. So she's a principal at Sundadeep World School, Ghaziabad. She has been in the education sector for last 27 years, started her career with Delhi Public School as a computer faculty, has been at the principal's capacity for last six years. She was also the founder principal of SKS World School Greater Noida. She has done her computer engineering followed by masters in IT. Currently, she is pursuing MA Psychology. She has been closely associated with Rotary Club and other NGOs. She has done lots of social activities in past. And the most major highlight was running Cheshcha, a school for the underprivileged in Greater Noida. I started my career as a teacher. Uh, there has been a lot of shift in my career as I did my engineering. And uh, you know, that time engineering, computer engineering, when I was uh, class 12th pass out uh, was a very highlighted thing. Uh, not everybody was into it. So my parents insisted that I get, get into engineering. Uh, you know, the, uh, that mindset was there. If you get good marks in 10th, you take the science in 12th, no options asked. And if you get uh, good marks in 12th, you have to do engineering, no questions asked. So you kept on going towards those fields, even if you had an inclination towards social work or humanities or arts. So I landed in, into engineering field to be, I, I am an academician. I always knew, even when I was in corporate, I was aware because I was, I am too attracted towards the children, their positivity. And I personally want to be, bring the change wherever I can, whatever uh, little bit I can do for the society. So 
being with the children was uh, one of my love and uh, there was no way better than being a teacher i started my career as a primary teacher tgt pgt coordinator i mean it's been a long journey 27 years during that time period when we were working uh, we realized that a big infrastructure of the school is left unused majorly the junior wing after 12 12 30 and we used to stay in school as a coordinator at him, uh, till 5 30 but then that area was cleaned up and unlocked for the next uh, day it was only in use for three hours in a day maximum three and a half hours so while having this discussion sometime on the rounds uh, our seniors discussed how can we utilize this area so we started the concept of cheshta we started with an evening school called cheshta it was an actually a cheshta cheshta hindi word uh, for effort to bring them uh, to the school 1 30 to 4 30 we used to teach them from there my polishing of administrative level started i started becoming an administrator handling well handedly ensuring in three hours they have good learning but it was a major success it was a big success the parents who were very apprehensive why anybody will give our children free education and in such a big uh, you know 15 17 acres of land and why anybody they all had you know so many questions that time I'm talking about, but yes, we had to uh, ensure that we have uniform, midday meal, annual days, sports day. So uh, gradually they started uh, trusting us, uh, that trust was built up. So to keep, uh, mothers uh, the, they used to wait outside because we had no bus service. So um, for three hours, mothers usually used to sit outside the school. They were domestic helpers majorly and uh, they were used to send their children inside and chat and you know all those group uh, gossiping. Then we realized how to keep them busy. We started with a singer center. Uh, through Rotary Club, Interact Club of the school, I came in contact with singer people. We set up a facility of singer machines, almost 20 machines in the basement of the school where we started giving free, uh, you know, those training, uh, slide trainings to the uh, mothers. So now uh, the one part of the family was learning uh, skills and other part of the member of the family was learning academics. So it was a uh, good, good factor in the homes. By the time I left that school and handed over my Cheshta, my little effort to bring everybody into mainstream, the school had 376 children and uh, we had already um, registered ourselves with the uh, NIOS and children were till 8th class we used to have them because it won't, the government won't allow later and kids were already uh, registered with class 10. So uh, my daughter still is in that school so I'm still the parent and whenever I go I meet those boys and girls they have uh, started studying, working, uh, they are now very well-groomed citizens. So I am not able to recognize them, but uh, yes, they are able to, and they are very happy. Mothers are extremely happy. Now, moving ahead, we have with us Rajiv Kumar Singh, sir, principal at Skylark World School, Lucknow. Innovations and learning methods of mathematics and science designed mathematical models of learning in maths lab and maths park expert of vedic mathematics contributed in training students for competitive exams also he has also been certified by iim mdp and harvard graduate school of education he has also been awarded by up governor mr ram nick for his innovations in teaching learning methods of mathematical science as a school leader, he believes in creating, motivating, exploring ideas and instill skill by deeper experiential learning. Also, he has an experience of 21 plus years, including HCL and Kendra Vidyalaya and other schools. And I feel proud to be a teacher rather than calling a principal. The entire journey of teacher and each and every moment uh, spending with my students doing innovations in the classroom. Still, as a principal also, I prefer to have 
at least two classes every day to spend some time with my students. Just going by my journey, uh, 2000, I started working in Kendriya Vidyalaya as an ad hoc teacher. That time, it was never in my mind that I would be a teacher. My first dream was to be an army officer. My father was that, and being of that background, I was being always motivated to uh, adopt that profession. And uh, in fact, somewhere down the line, I was also interested. So in 1999, I tried through the CDS. I got through all interview, SSB, written. But uh, uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, what whatever you say, I was meant for a teacher. So in medical, I was rejected. So I have no repent at all. Uh, then I entered into this profession, and uh, since then, 2000, I have enjoyed like anything. Absolutely, it is a dynamic field where each and every moment we learn. In fact, rather than a teacher, we are a learner. I love to innovate with students <clears throat> while going to classroom. I always think that what is the new today I am going to give them, so that my student waits for my next class. So yes, uh, talking about the philanthropic project, uh, I was last eight years I was in HCL. The school is a residential school called as Vidya Gyan. So it's a philanthropic project started by uh, Shiv Nadar sir and her and his daughter uh, Madam Roshni Malhotra. So that is having a two branch right now. One is in Sitapur and one is in Dulera. It's somewhere near Noida. So I have worked in the Sitapur branch for eight years. and it's a very nice effort i enjoyed working there because we pick a student from class 6 onwards and till 12th it is totally free of cost staying uh, fooding lodging and all educations even we imparted coaching to iit or neet etc that all is free so we leave 24 cross 7 with the student and we give our best to make them select even after they leave the school after class 12th we follow them what they are doing which colleges they have gone if required scholarship is given so that was a wonderful experience for that uh, meanwhile this year only i got a chance to lead the school in lucknow and lucknow being my hometown my parents have settled here so it attracted me and then from sitapur i moved here yes i aspire to be in future to be a better educator a good principal in the sense that my student remember me for uh, innovative methods or something new i could give to society so moving forward we have with us paramjeet kumar sir who is the principal at dav international school he is committed to his soul for producing versatile visionary and very focused individuals within an educational environment which fosters innovation and enthusiasm his skill profiles also include teaching and administrative experience since 1998 he is skilled in encouraging and supportive reconstructive efforts to move the decision making process closer to the classrooms skilled in developing and improving student social skills also skilled with behavioral problems and in a successful manner he is adept in developing case conferences and working with parents i am born and brought up in dav when i say i am born and brought up in dav my schooling is from dav I have been a teacher in DAV, then I have been a principal in DAV, and throughout my journey, I have never been to any other institution. So this is Dayanand Anglo Vedic. It is the biggest uh, uh, non-government education institution, having around 924 branches all over India, and right now uh, we are dealing with around 40 lakh students at a stretch, with uh, a teaching strength of 22 lakh teachers, and uh, i am really blessed that i belong to such a family where learning is a continuous process and the value system is one part which is enthused in everyone our uh, dav organization came into being in 1885 at lahore and we find it a uh, genuine pride that uh, shahid e azam bhagat singh was the first student of our dav organization who was uh, studying at lahore and from there we started and gradually right now we have our head of head office at delhi when i'm talking about dealing with the case studies and dealing with the students uh, behavior uh, i'm remind of one anecdote that there was a there was a student who was studying standard 3 once he picked a note of rupees 500 from his place and came to the school 
parents came to know that the child is having money and has taken the money without the permission of the parents so gave a call to me at that time i was a coordinator in one of the schools and they gave me a call to me ki mr pandit uh, this is what has happened so you kindly see the child and uh, just give him a good treatment so i asked them that you need not to talk to the child that i know it and you have given me a call and i will talk to the child i went to the class and uh, believe me i was not aware that what i am going to do but i went to the class and i started with the story i narrated the story and i told the uh, the told whole of the class that uh, yesterday at night the angel has come to my dream and uh, has told me that there is a child in the class who has brought some money without the permission of the parents and uh, with the, the blessings of almighty now i can see that child who is sitting in this class i request that in case that child feels that it is not right he can come to me after this period and we can discuss over it believe me my dear friend he came to me and he said that i i just just said like that he has spent 60 rupees and 440 rupees a till it is for the child to me and sir i have only 30 this is 470 and i don't know today that boy is a team member of kabaddi team of punjab he is such a versatile and visionary child that he understood the value and he is carrying on with this, that value now he never like his parents never like the teachers though he was not good at studies like that like other students but and if i talk about myself after a journey of around 22 years i still find 24 years i still find that i am a learner and every day i learn something new which is really really add adding to my knowledge and adding to my experience as well so today again i'm going to learn something from the educationist those panel and about stem definitely it is the need of the to be discussed and now moving forward uh, is dr anupama shrivastav ma'am who is the principal at gorov memorial international school and ma'am i would like to apologize in the beginning itself ma'am had so many certifications so many research papers work done and i couldn't include them all so we would definitely want to hear from ma'am directly so she is a national science teacher awardee of 2014 by national academy of sciences she is a dedicated educator with a very strong academic background and a huge expertise of 30 years in the field of teaching and learning she won first award for her one research paper presented at international conference of society of agricultural biochemists Dr Shrivastav is also passionate to work with young generation to induce scientific spark to them under her leadership the legacy of GI GMS shall reach new heights my schooling and then my graduation post graduation was not very easy i had to face lot of hurdles but finally i was successful in all the areas post graduation from university of allahabad so because of my health issues i had to drop for a year and that was a very alarming thing for me because long back somebody told me that i will not be some you can say that some forecast was there that i will not be able to continue my higher studies so that was a very bad thing for me and i thought that i think so it is going to be true so teaching is a very uh, favorite area of my whole family so you can say that it is an inherited thing i love teaching i love to be there in the company of small students because these are there who always keep on telling us who always keep on teaching us every day with the small students we learn something new i am mentor at new york academy of sciences and i have been mentoring the teams of the students from about 25 countries since last 4 years the new york academy of sciences it gives stem challenges to the students which are the global challenges 
and ask them to find out innovative solutions which are based on science technology engineering and mathematics so therefore this area is also a very fond area of mine and i have got lot of exposure to this one i love to just inculcate scientific spirit in my students whether they are of any grade starting from the primary up to senior level up to class 12 uh, recently i have joined as principal but i was into the science since very long about 30 years and uh, this is now in my habit next we are having with us Kulvant Marwal sir who is the vice principal at J Jalaram International School he is a creative dynamic and adaptable administrator and a teacher with requisite qualifications and a comprehensive skill set underpinned by professional experience gained with varied roles in and above as in books like you and success the power of success principles various physics books for competitive exams like jee neat nda board exams of cbse caie igsc ib icse he is also associated with publication houses like holy faith international mbd chetna publications sh chan publications etc currently i am working as a administrator at parul school we are running three schools here in the campus and uh, the school name is rumta vidya bhavan so talking about my journey as a educator it was in blood because uh, my father was running a school before my birth so it came into blood and then over the years of journey of teaching pre primary to post grads it became habit now it's like breathing the day which i spend without teaching or without coming to school is just like a day wasted during the pandemic times when we uh, you know we were helpless like the online classes were even started uh, maybe 15 days or after a month so in the meanwhile i thought of uh, you know utilizing the time to enhance the skill set that time this authoring thing happened actually and uh, uh, by god's grace the books have got great success and before that also i was working with the publication houses as a editor or you can say proofreader for their mistakes maybe and uh, my journey as an educator started at the age of 14 when i was uh, just pass out from grade 12 during the time of my college studies i started teaching tuitions actually but uh, with the grace of god i got appointed in a, a school as a part time physics faculty as i had a engineering and science background it was easy for me to teach physics but uh, in the uh, previous years of my journey i thought that somewhere the system is lacking in the teaching of science in india so i thought of coming on the chair to change the system first also continuing with the teaching part also uh, right now i am teaching physics to the iits as well as neat students plus i teach uh, students of my school as well along with educating the school i prefer that uh, this topic which you chose today the uh, panel discussion is very close to my heart the introduction of science technology engineering and maths in the teaching learning process since we all are talking about stem and as i have mentioned prior we are also having an expertise for stem with us today his name is vaishnav and he is a first class honors in aerospace engineering from university of hertfordshire uk he has worked on paragliders rockets and international aero modeling competitions during the university tenure He has more than four years of experience in STEM education, business operations, and marketing. He is an avid public speaker with schooling days, won an international debate competition also, which was attended by over thirty-seven countries. He is proficient in public relations and communication, MS Office designing and analysis, and many more. Uh, so I haven't been, uh, you know, into the field that long. 
uh, but still had a very interesting approach to my schooling days and engineering and how we started uh, with the organization that we are uh, so I, i did my schooling from senic school uh, so i joined it as a uh, as a uh, hosteler as a boarding school in class 6 so it was a very different approach from what normal students go through throughout their uh, the main high school and the middle school right because it's all about rather than education we were all about sports and you know building friendships and how you can prepare for uh, the defense forces and all so that that is the main aim of sani schools to get you prepared for nda and everything and because i couldn't get my to know also list in the school uh, in ninth class so he cleared air force uh, he uh, got like seventh rank all over india in the returns and interviews and all he is currently a fighter pilot su30 uh, Uh, with the indian air force was also in the uh, the surgical strike that our government did so that was true yes because why i knew it from my own sources uh, but ironically i couldn't clear that right uh, and i was kind of quite famous during the school because i used to be very good in sports i used to be very good in academics public speaking and everything uh, but th- that that's what life is all about right and uh, what i decided from the first experience was i was never going to apply again you know because i wanted to let's see and my brother was very clear to me uh you know why don't try something else because you already have so much army and air force in the family my dad was already in the army uh, uh so he retired uh, in 1999 but my brother dad and even other relatives as well so he wanted me to go pursue something different something you know maybe uh, go outside india and i had no other options left because i didn't prepare for ai triple and iit right and when you are in 12th the generation that we have right now if you don't prepare it for at least one year two years or Uh, as the companies are doing right if you, if you don't join it from sixth class or so so there's no choice get no, no chance uh, getting into those kind of thing i still remember i gave uh, the iit plea exam without any preparation uh, i got the rank 697000 and when i came out of the cyber cafe uh, the guy was asking me do even uh, you know uh, do those many people still sit in the exam and even i was confused that yeah 697 doesn't sound good right by the time i reached my home i even forgot the number because there was no point remembering that right but that that was what i realized that because the schooling was so different and still i wasn't bad in remembering concepts or basic science and maths and you know basic things that we can actually need to uh, do something logical in real life or you know talk to people have a meaningful conversation i wasn't bad at all but when you look at the marks it, it, it didn't do justice at all right because i realized that uh, getting marks and being good in academics is not the same thing and a whole of the india realizes that right because there's so much theory so much rote learning and if you don't do this you ask your friends how many times they finished the maths book before the exam so they'll say 10 times 20 times and you haven't even covered half of the chapters but that's how our learning system is and it's not just we right a lot of other countries they're still developing and finding out how exactly we should learn because i think that is the only thing people have done so much in technology but the only thing that people have not done enough is how do people learn because we don't know how to evaluate we don't know how they learn right because there's no correlation in what we do uh, so but in in the journey i realized that you know let's do something different so i thought aerospace is the most different word that you can hear right because you see all cs and mechanical and this and that so i applied applied for different universities made some friends in india before so i don't have to be very uh, new when i go to uk but that was the greatest moment the four years that i spent there and again it was not at all about education the best thing was the labs they were so attractive and so beautiful even when i had to earn money for my own hostel or you know do everything else that a normal teen does when he goes to uk first time but still there there were so many factors that that you know all that always uh, in in that cold right and but still if you have a 8 am class i was still always ready because I, the labs they were so good and the theory periods were only limited for let's say 10 to 20% of the classes throughout the year everything else was all they'll give you problems and you need to solve and it was so new i struggled so much in the first or second semester because we have never been taught how to solve problems right we know how to solve concepts or you know solve things you you'll get a formula do it 10 times then you will do it better but we never know how to solve real life problems right and when i get into university i went i went into aerospace and they were pro- they were talking about something else really really something else so i realized that you know it will have to be very quick and we need to you know adapt to new things but that is where the journey for aviatron started uh, so me my co-founders uh, so i have a co-founder with me neha who's done a masters from cranfield bachelor's from liverpool worked with nasa which is a very hard experience another one who's done his bachelor's from scotland and all of them the single point we all of us loved there was the practical experience uh, we had labs set up by ford uh and jaguar land rover in a university right so you can imagine the difference that the school or university the resources and the company what a different company can actually do because they're doing it in real life 
so that is what we realized when we came back to india so we started a stem organization uh, now we have more than 20000 students already a part of us and we are all about stem and experiential learning no theory no books no pen paper nothing even if it's online even if it's off- offline it's all about students building real products doesn't matter if they are from science maths commerce arts uh, totally totally doesn't matter for us because all we teach them is how do we solve real life problems and i'm sure we'll get into detail when we get into the topic explain us what exactly stem education means and if you can also explain us the origins of it like for the parents to understand in a more easier format uh, when we talk about uh, stem i think uh, the need to approach problem solving with multiple disciplines was the drive for coining the interdisciplinary term which is known as stem you know uh, how vishnu was speaking from there i could uh, get the whole thing it says that um, you know when we are talking about stem and science technology engineering and mathematics which otherwise you know which uh, uh, we thought that we are going to teach them separately and they've got nothing to do with each other so this approach where we said problem solving approach where he said that we were not never taught for problem solving this led to this term stem and uh, these subjects work together when implemented in the real life context i'm picking up whatever you said besh now so that's from uh, where actually that is what we are referring to for a whole problem solution if you look at it you know again i'm going back it's like approach problem solving multidisciplinary and when we are talking about all these these we want to implement it in the real life context for a whole problem solution so that's how technically through a combination of the subjects individuals can solve problems and apply knowledge in real life context is the base for stem now when we are talking about the connection between stem and the four components of the whole problem solution uh, if we can just break it up for uh, a common uh, layman like me i would say the science proposes why you know the theory technology explains how the process engineering determines what the design and maths reveals relationships that is the concept integrated stem education is an approach to teaching the stem content in two or more stem domains bound by practices within an authentic context for the purpose of connecting these subjects to enhance student learning supported by if you look at it how what he was also talking came about hands on learning engineering design science inquiry technological literacy mathematical thinking and a community of practice so i think that's how we can take it up whenever we are talking about stem and there's one more thing if we just understand you know when we are talking about technology of where it is not about just the digital devices we are talking about it also includes which processes and tools can be used to achieve an outcome such as like choosing the right fishing line that's also technology you know we are talking about design thinking like our school school for last two years heavily into design thinking this year we are rank 5 all india for design thinking we were last year all india rank 1 for steam education so that's where it's it it was nothing about you know technology which is something different or technology where uh, you know vaishnav gets a rank and he gets into iit no this is like technology at any point now when we talk about science it's not just about going to the physics chemistry bio lab it also applies to things like horticulture land management so and mathematics it's not just about equations or the numbers it's like you go into the market and asking i want to buy let's say this mobile as well as this pen together so it is like 30 rupees plus 10 rupees together so that is what mathematics we talk about in a building what is the length height breadth that's how it also provides a shared knowledge for science and engineering if you look at it mathematics it's like a combination science plus the engineering part and now i come to the engineering part it's not just about designing and making it also includes the thinking process of needs designing for purpose and evaluating products i can actually keep talking about there are students you know just uh, before this session uh, i just got a message from one of my students uh, we have this e cell in our school where the students uh, from grade 8 onwards they come up with the startup ideas and 
with the startup ideas so we have these mentors you know who are already doing their startups or our alumni who are there so these are the ones who mentor the students so i have the student one student i will first share is in grade 8 he is jeev rescue app he started in the covid times you know when the animals were abandoned so this application this child has built and he's got like from the government also a scholarship similarly the other child prasiddhi she is doing a startup idea it's all about you know uh, we've taken up that sdg where we say no hunger zero hunger so this talks about how you know the leftover food it's like the n number of um, places where you can keep but she's designed an application how the fresh nutrients everything is checked then only distributed and uh, just today iit mumbai has selected her as top 15 uh, entrepreneurs and they're going to train her so if you look at it what i was referring to that's what is stem all about we always had this big misconception that you know this is something different as a stem a alag se club bana do no it's like every single class i'm sure every educator would agree it's right there how i uh, take up any of the lesson plan i say teen cheez ko aap dekho bahut aaram se one is the sdgs which is like something what we should be uh, talking about the second is i say steam stem everywhere and tell the students it's not different third is dt design thinking a combination of the three talks about what i was referring to basically stem is nothing it is you know to arouse the curiosity amongst the student to have scientific temperament and scientific temperament is one thing which is the need of the hour as far as we are to grow nitikita i will be adding again ab this stands for dayanand anglo vedic i'll be elaborating here because it is relevant here here d stands for dayanand who was a, a you know social reformer of the time v stands for vedas and a stands for anglo now what anglo means it is it means the scientific temperament so the the super seniors of our they were of that mind that the scientific temperament is required and it is way back around 23 years back in united kingdom it has been planned that such a curriculum should be there like my friend told that where there will be no exams the students will be applying it it's an application of mind to be critical and analytical so the stem is one thing which ma'am has already explained when we are talking about science maths and uh, it and then about uh, the subjects this is a combination which is forcing the child to be critical think uh, and then uh, the education policy of ours in india the research work the real research work is negligible the students they are not into the research work why because they don't have the critical thinking they don't have the innovative thinking and this stem this part of uh, an education which is right from the beginning the students are into it but it is just to uh, you know enthuse it is just to push them for the scientific temperament such topics such subjects should be given due importance so that in the years to come we have india at the top this is the only way with scientific temperament the indian students the student also already you know had the major uh, portion of the market already in their hand in it and in all other fields they are going to grow and these healthy discussions where the educationist will be sitting together and uh, <clears throat> discussing on such topics may lead to some conclusions where the students will be getting benefited and the credit goes to the people like you who are gathering these educationists together you can tell us that how did stem gained its popularity in the past few years and how it is different from steam uh, we were into stem years ago then we lost the track somewhere now we are coming back to it if you uh, look at the past most of the nobel uh, prize winners from our country were from uh, you know the 
साइंस स्ट्रीम अब तो कुछ ऐसा इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे वी आर नॉट इवन गेटिंग रिकॉग्नाइज मे बी बिकॉज दैट थिंकिंग स्केल ऑफ मल्टीपल लेवल्स हैज गॉन डाउन ओवर द इयर्स वी हैव फोकस्ड और मे बी ट्रेन आर चिल्ड्रन टू स्टडी अकेडमिक्स एंड गिव द रिजल्ट एंड एज वैष्णव सिंह uh get a rank can get into particular uh, iit or whatever so the focus was initially it was not there when uh, we had uh, dr sara bai and uh, jc bose and all those you know thinkers so i personally assume that time stem education was uh, in the uh, that was that time the uh, stem education was there emphasized because i don't think they had to get into that rat race to get into some institution entrance was easier maybe the population was less whatever so uh, there we were developing the thinkers the creators the innovators somewhere in down the line this all came uh, to uh, spirally down again the time has come as we know our schools do not prepare children for job market neither uh, if you look at the data engineer lot many engineers are there but there are no jobs and when these engineers come to us or any other company for interview they don't know anything it's not their fault it's the way we teach because we tell them those four or five books of engineering and they have to you know mug up the syllabus and do the practical so while coming to the job market they are totally untrained here comes the need of stem education basically uh to create innovators create creative skills thinkers so that they are skillfully developed uh they develop some good skills maybe in any field engineering science technology mathematics they all are different but integrated together this whole uh, concept of stem give them a chance to find out where is their calling they learn they this education will help us in two ways in long run Uh, why it is gaining popularity because once it has innovators and creative thinkers so uh, startups will be there like ma'am talked about the apps and everything so uh, at least shake their minds uh, and let them think out of the box and start thinking about creating anything it may take shape or not if it is not taking a good shape then somebody more learned will jump in and help those students to give a shape to that thought process second thing if their thought process has taken a shape then it they will be the employers they will be creating jobs for many other people so uh, in incorporating stem education is definitely going to help the children the next generation in both the manners creating jobs giving jobs and ultimately uh, boosting the economy because uh, they all have to these young boys and girls have to go outside the country and look at the labs wow what nice labs they were what nice machineries we can create i have gone to most of you must have visited and we have gone to i have gone to iit kharagpur and seen the labs wonderful labs but they are stagnant at some stage 1978 ki machine hai to wahan hai so we need creators thinkers innovators who can polish their internal skill create more machinery not uh, mechanical every kind of machinery create jobs for the upcoming generations and the person working in that setup also need to be stem trained to get job of that kind so the demand and supply gap the job is demanding a thing and we are teaching b stem will bring that narrow that gap when we are talking about stem we keep on talking about creativity creativity so art integration is also needed to beautify the things to uh learn it or to bring some uh, factor of non technical aspect into it the psychology part of uh, you know human the philosophical part that too is required because yes. science only science has been science has been introducing so many uh, discoveries but the we the people we are misusing them rather using them Had there been no technology so we would have not been interacting with each very other true, very true very true we are interacting for the improvement of the mankind Man. so this is the psychological part in it and moreover some people have uh, you know uh, 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 spelled it like 
S T E M M. That is the medical part. It is not the mathematical part. This is the medical part, which is also included into that. So yeah. everything is included, but it is to enhance the scientific temperament, yeah. basically. Yeah. And yeah. once the scientific temperament is there, the child can move into any uh, field with a strong, uh, you know, uh, uh, base and can do anything which is really going to be icon for others. It's Time. only possible with the temperament. It's it's only possible with that environment. Once you have a strong will, it's a you know it's a uh, it's a common quote with me, and I really love it. Nikita, when we play a game or when we participate in a competition, the two things happen. One, either we win, or we learn, or we. Nitika, when we participate in a game, either, either we win or we <laughs> learn. Learn. We learn how to win. Learn. Either we win. But we learn how to win. So we never lose. So we must participate, and that is the temperament which is required in science as well. Initially, this team <clears throat> going very briefly about that history. In two thousand one, NSF of US, they started it. The primary target was to create a workforce development and uh, to address the national security concern and to uh, some extent uh, address the immigration policy also. so they have their own study which told them that the uh, going ahead in the future uh, us uh, students or the uh, citizens are not more inclined to this and the prosperity and the national security concern will has to be addressed so they started framing a policy uh, which started initially in 2001 steam and uh, just re- connecting it to india uh, we should be proud that out of lot of constitutions indian constitution is the one which gives us a mandam, uh, mandate uh, as a fundamental duty of citizen to develop scientific temperament there are very few constitution uh, constitutions like that so that's a proud thing for us uh, i don't know uh, there are any there are any other countries where constitution gives us that priority to develop the scientific temperament so that is one thing and then coming back to or comparing that steam and uh, stem of course as uh, indu man has said and pramjit sir has said alkama has said it adds on to the humanity section arts so the moment we are adding a word a now the question is uh, what is the exact difference was it required the answer is yes very much because generally we talk about we have a uh, two sections of the brain lobe some are inclined to the some Uh, artifacts some are to scientific persons so it will it won't be justified if we evaluate a person based on one way so the moment we add on humanities or arts to the stream it becomes much much more powerful for example just to quote if in the field of stem i add data visualization it will become wonderful if i add infographics it becomes wonderful and easy to understand if i am using 3d printing that's also unique fine art imaging that also in it so that is how this steam has become more powerful than stem so this is how when we integrate it this is a integration and gives much more experiential learning and collaboration of various technology that means i can have a team of uh, candidates where we are collaborating some may be very good at uh humanities or arts fine arts some may be very good at mathematics some may be very good at thinking concepts and that team collaboration can bring out a much more better result so that is how i look at steam and stem so of course it's a expanded version and steam should be welcome always there is a combination of humanities and arts will yield much more better result can stem play a major role in the implementation of nep 2020 framework so actually if we see stem this has evolved as a multi disciplinary approach and uh, it is critical for imparting new age skills what are these new sk- uh, new uh, age skills these are the skills of solving any problem generating creativity in the children then arising critical analysis developing critical analysis for any of the problem and nep aims at that only 
in due course of time we are gradually finding that now in coming time majority of the uh, jobs they are going to demand for science and maths background i agree with indu ma'am she has said that there is there will be in coming time a uh, requirement for the stem based education which is very important as uh, in 2016 to 19 we have seen that in india only the job postings based on stem have increased by 44% and in coming time as national science foundation has said there will be about 80% of the global jobs because we are moving towards globalization so the these global jobs will be basically requiring the form of maths and science skills now if we see our stem platform nowadays we are facing lot of problems because of many things we are lacking the infrastructure in majority of the schools we don't have the labs as uh, i think so vaishnav has said we don't need any particular type of lab every subject and alka ma'am also said in every subject wherever we are teaching science maths is already incorporated we need to bring into notice of the children that how this is going to be integrated the subjects are going to be integrated right we don't have very specific curriculum we don't have teaching and learning resources we don't have dedicated lab and infrastructure which we see as a problem but nep was always trying to find out the solution how we can enhance the stem we can introduce the stem in our curriculum lot of efforts have been made and here it has been found that nep uh, nep uh, nep recognizes uh, recognizes and sets a path for multidisciplinary approach to education which is actually connected to the learning process if we see our examination system examination pattern these are more based on the rote learning nep has tried to find out the solution where the students learn by experimenting by real life connections whatever the classroom study is there how this is to be integrated and connected to the everyday life experiences so the skills are developed in this way according to the nep stem science technology engineering and mathematics about which we are talking continuously that has got a lot of connection and it has got lot of solutions to these problems of unskilled means the child goes to the studies but when the child comes out of the school we find that practically child is not very much fit he does the experiment even in the physics lab chemistry lab and biology lab but if we ask the child to just uh, if the uh, light go, uh, if the light goes off means power cut is there if we ask the child if we expect our children that they are able to connect it it will not be possible because they do not have the practical knowledge right so stem has nep has aimed on this the curriculum is being designed in such a way so that whatever lapses are there in our education system in our examination system they are going to be matched right the yes stem based education which is the main theme of nep that has helped a lot in meeting the objectives of the nep's such as it fosters the creativity and divergent thinking alongside the fundamental disciplines it motivates and inspires young people to generate new technologies and ideas because a child is doing end and learning so when we, both of these areas are clubbed naturally the fundamental principles they become more clear child is always busy in innovating the teachers they give the 
means we help the students to find out the solution in an innovative way and when we talk about this naturally we have to give some resources we have to give them some links that you go through these ones find out where the problem from where the problem arises and what can be the ways to find out the solutions for these ones clubbing all these four fields that is science technology engineering and mathematics so that a new solution comes out which will be very much helpful in long run the full form of stem may be different but if i take the general linguistic meaning of stem that is what the one thing which provides stability to a tree if i consider education as a tree stem should be the thing which will provide the stability to the education how like if we talk about building scientific temperament through nep in our students in india already we have got you know lot of ncfs lot of policies lot of five years plan lot of you know implementation in the field of education by the government now it's our responsibility of the educators to really implement those things on ground because things are implemented from the government side on paper but they are not really implemented on ground let us see how nep will narrow that gap between the on paper learning and actual learning second thing which you are talking about is steam the integration of humanities as well as psychology as well as commercial aspects too because humanity is not only arts it is also covering the financial aspect of commerce you can this economics everything so steam is a more profound word to be used in education rather than stem only if we talk about the scientific meaning of steam it is known as the essence left after burning the things like if i boil water then the uh, third stage gaseous state of matter is steam right that is how our education should be the education of a child should not be only focused on the rote learning the first thing which we have heard in childhood all of you will agree with me learn by heart learn by heart learn by heart and let me tell you i was in a panel discussion earlier in offline mode actually it was the principals conference in udaipur uh, some month back the topic of concern was emotional question how it is important for learning we often confuse that iq is required for learn but it is only 20% of actual the emotional quotient or you can say as paramjit sir said psychology is required in this education part because if we know how the things are working we know everything on paper we know the process behind it but we need to put the child in the center so that he or she may use those skills imparted in his or her education in the real life learn by heart ko humne ratta mar bana diya then if i differentiate or combine all these words together science technology engineering maths everything in education is just a journey of unknown to know the general mass that is you know misconveyed regarding the value of the stem so i think stem in terms of the definition and how it is evolved into steam is already being summarized right and all of so uh, experienced panelists and you've been working with schools for so long uh, and stem hasn't been that old uh, as like indu ma'am was telling it was before uh, you know in the ancient times but we lost it we got back to the newer methods or we can say the uk methods right because that is that is how they ruled us and all the education system was going according to that uh, but when uh, so i think 10 to 15 years uh, people have now at least gotten an idea what stem is and india has kind of started you know 
uh, involving a little bit of parts of that but that gets us to the level where rather than the knowledge there's more misconceptions around it right so what is not stem that is also important to discuss right so a coding program or a robotics program is not stem right a science experiment or a visit to a museum is not stem or you know uh, teaching advanced calculus in a relating it with the real life situation just on its own is not stem so when we get to the real crux so yes exactly it's a interdisciplinary approach multidisciplinary thing but how do we do it for students who haven't even heard science right so let's say for a third class student he has evs in his books he has never heard science and i go and tell it to him that you know we'll do stem learning and we we'll like what is stem uh, and if i teach them okay so s plus t plus e plus a plus m a is very important we don't do anything at our organization without the a part because if if you if you are not able to communicate if you are not able to build it the ergonomics the aesthetics it's all very 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 important but when nobody understands the real meaning so we tell them okay you know what forget everything let's talk about real life scenarios how do you travel to school right or how does your parent uh, your father goes to job so does he have a activa or a car and for example in my in the back end of my mind i had the vision that i need to tell him about or a, a activity of a chug glider but i'm not going to start so we need to have design thinking there as alka ma'am was telling right so they need to know a problem but before knowing that problem they need to know a situation and to know that situation they need to go back to what they do at home because school they are all too much theory and subjects they don't have time right and they need to prepare for exams or some other competitions and all everything else apart from the school is what they learn from their parents even if they have a bicycle or an activa or a car but when they relate it and if i tell them okay uh, so how much time do you take uh via the school bus from let's say a point a to point b and they tell them this much time okay i tell them you know from tomorrow your school is going to be in udaipur but you live in delhi so you need to fly every day or you need to do something else how are you going to do that so somebody might have you know sat in a plane before or nobody has done that so then they evolve which is how exactly the evolution happened right so you tell them you can either travel by car or ship or uh, you know a plane and then i tell them how about we build a plane so can you solve a problem where we need to transport something very fast but we don't have enough time and there's no depth of resources i'm giving you you know unlimited money and if then they get back to the point that yes maybe we can build a plane plane is a fastest way of transportation and then if they build a very small chug glider made out of wood or cardboard or plastic that brings the real uh, sense of problem solving right maybe in the back of my trainer who was taking the class or the teacher who is taking that class he knows ultimately i had to get a plane done right but uh, it's get it gets very interesting when we see that kind of process ultimately a lot of students might even come up with something great that wasn't even a plane right so you gave them that freedom to choose to express to get to the outcome and maybe some of them will say let's build a plane so you also build the plane but you still have to give a lot of other raw materials and other resources that somebody might have given a different idea not a plane maybe somebody say sir balloon laga lete hain ek cheez ke upar let's make it a hot air balloon and we'll fly right or we'll we'll build something else to do something else but you need to give them that freedom to do that so the basic main misconception when we come back to the concept not just a coding or not just a basic program and especially i do feel it very very you know very important to realize that uh, coding and robotics and when you get into solving those kind of digital things it should be done for grade 8th and above and such right before that you should be solving problems logically and maybe build more through your own hands that is what is more important rather than doing things more digitally right because those things you'll all anyways adapt you don't need to teach a you know kid who's never gone to a school to watch a video on youtube they learn on it own anyways but you still need to you need to teach them the practical things and when we get out of that misconception race then we realize the real stem literacy that are we solving the concepts fundamentally how are we doing that are we giving them enough resources to do that if we are giving them enough resources are we giving them enough chances to fail so that they come back to a point where they can actually innovate and are they coming out with something that even you wouldn't have imagined as a teacher that is what uh, gets us to the point where you will be amazed with what your students can do right even if it's online school uh, organization or anything so i think uh, talking about misconception is also important because then we get to the uh, right point where we can know how to implement this now because if if all we have th- uh, you know uh, thought about stem is you know uh, maybe a robotics competition once a year or some other program or uh, you know uh, a quiz or something like that then we wouldn't be the in the best place to implement those uh, to implement we need to understand the real definition we all, all already know that but when we get to the point of how exactly we give them the freedom to do it on their own 
then we can think about the real implementation we need trainers we need lab we need raw materials uh, we need enough competitions we need enough opportunities for them to grow and we also need them to come up with enough things so we can continue that in the next year right yeah, i completely agree uh, with what he was talking about the misconceptions and uh, i think we can move up to the next question and very aptly said that how we are how we think coders or a person is mathematics like you need to have a certain different kind of skill set um, no it has to be incorporated in a day to day teaching which is taking place like every single activity very beautifully taken up when he was talking about the craft activity very apt like the educator needs to know the fine land but uh, the process has to be simple and beautiful how can we relate stem to the quantifiable uh, student outcomes that includes both academic and the personality is there any science behind this as well ji definitely because as uh, vashna was just right now talking about i second his thought i really uh, appreciate him that it is developing the you know thinking skill of the child if the scientific temperament is there the child is going to dwell the child is going to dwell or is going to culminate one habit of asking the question and then finding the solutions and that is what stem is all about you having the knowledge of science you are having the knowledge of engineering you are having the knowledge of it then you are having the knowledge of mathematics or medical or arts and then if you start thinking of that why it is required and where it can be applic where it is applicable and how i can get the better solution the child's personality is definitely going to grow today in uh, in the market it is not the uh, innovations which are you know like most it is the idea behind that that what this uh, idea is going to meet with what is the purpose of uh, bringing out this innovation if that is there definitely the people are after that and once the people are after that it gives you a moral boost inside it gives you a confidence inside yes i am doing something for the humanity <clears throat> nikita ji i usually talk to my students that in, uh, for myself i say that i have i am not known to the no names of my forefathers after my grandfather who was there i know but before him who was there i have forgotten but each one of us whether we are related or we are not related but we know the name of dr apj abdul kalam ji why because he was having a scientific temperament and he did something for the humanity he did something his innovations have served the humanity this is what when the child is going to learn and is going to imbibe definitely will boost his uh, moral boost his, is go going to boost his confidence and the child is uh, definitely is going to become a personality in the society which will be liked by all so in junior classes like ashutosh said in junior classes if we are developing the habit of thinking ways and means to solve a problem we are basically uh, developing a platform for stem so i think that this is what is required is the need of the art that is why it has been included in N nep when we are talking about skill when we are talking about the child can have n number of combination of the subjects where the child wants to dwell on so this nep is going to help spreading stem in a big way if i can just add out here uh, where you are talking about the quantifiable student outcomes a very brief uh, i would like to add on like through stem projects some core competencies you know that are evaluated uh, through student outputs you know when we talk about the outcomes so what can we evaluate is the competencies in critical thinking systems thinking and problem solving competencies in collaborative work competencies in communication media technology for communication competencies in scientific skills like observation exploration experimentation um uh, prediction design planning so these assessment they come from various areas that show that you know these emerging competencies are there such as and how do we evaluate it by observations the common task accomplished pieces of work what they're taking up the research work you know discussion participation presentation i think uh, this is how uh, you can relate stem to quantifiable student outcomes once the children are into stem education they are as we are talking since the beginning of the session they become creative innovative skilled 
more uh, have the uh, more scientific temperament so the end result as ma'am mentioned just now the word competency i'll change the word and say they become uh, tend to become more intelligent and sharper they are ready to face the word uh, uh, face the questions give the questions to the word and uh, so the final outcome is a very well polished uh, citizen you know who is uh, ready to take the challenge well, and the give challenge. the challenge give the challenge to the world and is very polished knowledgeable and uh, aesthetically aware uh, so it's a you know 10 on 10 kind of combination if we are aiming at and if we are able to bring the children up to 7 on 10 combination so it's going to be a good generation the earth is going to be uh, in safer hands in the coming year the generation is going to be much more smarter and competent as the man said yeah it's, uh, we are going to have good set of children second thing i would like to add as sir was talking about the uh, confidence level or what was the word about the not having stem you used some word one single statement i would like to say that many schools and institutions are under the concept if you are going to introduce stem education it has to be big bulky air conditioned labs and you know big machinery is coming over and we cannot afford that but uh, stem is nothing new it's all those things just combined together so one misconception in parents mm-hmm. mind and teachers and educators is this that this will take away the child from the mainstream learning and the child will go somewhere else and learn something and they are not aware of the outcome so one one misconception which we have to eradicate from everybody's mind is that it is a normal learning it's just the multidisciplinary uh, thing and inti- things are, are only integrated it's not something else coming from some other planet so this is one major misconception about setting up the stem labs i mean when the people vendors come to us we want to set up stem labs so it uh, looks like oh my god crore ka kharcha hai aur number 2 aisa lagta hai ki it will take away us from the normal teaching learning process so these are the two misconceptions which i feel personally uh are there in people's mind everybody educator parents teachers and owners school owners also about aviton and how it is helpful to all the students out there right i think uh, so we have so much to learn and so much to you know uh, look forward to in all these fields that we are looking at but definitely now people have started started talking about this Uh, within the school and after the school as well. So after the school, parents need to understand if we can inculcate this kind of development in the kids, whether they themselves uh, had or didn't have this kind of exposure. But they'll still need to make sure that you know we give enough opportunities for our students uh, to experiment, to fail. And within school, I think all of us we already have so much knowledge. And now uh, after NEP, we also have so much framework knowledge that how exactly we can do this. and as a company we are also uh, pushing the vision forward very strongly uh, we work closely with stem.org who i personally believe uh, is the so it's an organization from us who are you know spearheading the uh, stem movement globally uh, so all our programs and you know all our certificates are aggregated from them so i see a lot of this going uh, you know within india at a very fast pace whether we are talking about tri three or villages we do a lot of movements with a lot of ngos across uh, government schools and villages as well so people have already started talking about this and i think n- now is the perfect time to get that implemented so that all our students you know can actually uh, get benefited from this kind of learning because i think the exams and ranks and boring education is now long uh, too much right we've all felt too much so i think we need to get out of that race and once we give start because we'll ourselves start enjoying that and that's how as an organization we enjoy like all our founders all our trainers we love giving that freedom of practical learning to each kid and they'll you know they'll come back and they'll amaze you with with what they can do actually we will start seeing that in the next 5 years they have any final advice to all the students all the parents and the teachers out there or anything which they would want to come <clears throat> just few basic things which will definitely promote stem uh just giving accounting first of all i will say that in kare's question generally what happens that our children ask why how etc and we just ask them to set up okay do whatever i am doing saying so that should be the first thing 
that will definitely increase the thinking ability second thing uh, as ma'am said indu ma'am we don't require a very sophisticated lab just take them to museum take them to nature walk let them think let them put question so we don't require it at all third thing uh, while at home also uh, whether they are watching tv or using computers or laptops whatever is there it should not be simply entertainment a parents role is there we can motivate them towards the stem thinking just open ended question thrown to them they will start thinking about that and then this correlating with their career and all these stocks means what you will what you want to become what is that stream and all these things so open ended question will also help so these are the two three things which will help us uh, in project based learning or problem based learning or inquiry based learning so this will definitely be more that is my advice to parents as my vision statement says and i firmly believe in that that it is for uh, the cbsc it is for the parents it is for the school educators and it is for the owners as well that take care of the saplings and the trees take care of themselves so this is the right time that we need to build up we need to make a platform for the growth of stem in our schools and this stem is basically these are the four pillars the science the technology the engineering and the mathematics these are the four pillars upon which a solid you know building can be built up so to make this platform very strong this is the right time when the people are talking about stem so take care of this sapling and this let this sapling grow into a big tree with a good stem so that is what my piece of advice to everyone i'd like to think that uh, dear students and parents you know uh we need to move uh, ahead and see you know what is in future right now whatever jobs are there another few years these jobs won't be there so therefore when we are talking about stem education it's going to teach the children more than science and maths concept it's going to focus on hands on learning with real world applications what we are talking about and what is most important is that it is going to you know uh, help them uh become skilled with problem solving critical thinking creativity curiosity decision making leadership entrepreneurship acceptance of failure and more and majorly one major skill set what we keep talking about when we talk about industrial revolution 50 is adaptability you know we won't have these jobs but these skill sets are going to make us perfect for the jobs which are going to be there so i think stem as sir just said that we have to make that strong stem out there so very shortly i'll say stem is the new keyword go for it okay uh i will request the parents to let your child develop five c's collaboration communication coordination critical thinking and creativity don't kill the creativity every child is born with some scientific temper but actually we kill it in due course of time we start giving the answers we don't promote why where when how type of questions we start giving the answers directly and naturally then the inherent power natural power natural capacity of learning is suppressed because we do not allow the innovation we do not allow the creative thinking and this way we just abolish the characteristic of the thinking as well as the scientific temperament of a baby i would like to convey to the educators as well as parents just to give the freedom to the students for otpa observe think process and apply